Welcome everybody. Can you please take your seats and we'll get this session underway. My name is Luke Ingram and I'm a representative from the Australian Government Department of Environment. Thanks for attending this session on the Laponia World Heritage in Swedish Lapland, Sweden area, a new management of protected areas where Sami traditional knowledge is of high significance. Today's presenter is Dr. Orsa Jonsson, a Sami woman whose family works in the rain reindeer herding industry. Uh, Dr. Jonsson is a director of site management responsible for the Laponia World Heritage Area. And I just wanted to point it out, there's two microphones down the front here. Um, and if there's time at the end of the pr presentation, there'll be a Q&A session. And, and if you want to ask questions and answers, then come to those microphones down the front. So can I please ask you to uh, help me in welcoming Dr. Orsa Jonsson. Thank you very much. I'm Osa Nordin Jonsson, and I'm from Sweden, and I'm Sami, and I also belong to a reindeer herding family. In, uh, and I'm going to talk about uh, World Heritage Laponia, and Laponia has been a World Heritage since 1996, but it's until first this year the Sami people have the management for, of the World Heritage. Until now it has been the county administration in Sweden. And uh, UNESCO's mot uh, motivation to the World Heritage was uh, the committee considered that the site is of outstanding universal value as it contains examples of ongoing geological, biological, and ecological processes, a great variety of natural phenomena of exceptional beauty and significant biological diversity, including a population of brown bear and the alpine flora. It was known that the site met all conditions of integrity. The site has been occupied continuously by the Sami people since prehistoric times. It's one of the last and unquestionably largest and best preserved examples of an area of sense humans involving Sami migrating by large reindeer bear herds, a practice that was widespread at one time and which dates back to an early stage in human economic and social development. And then, what is Laponia? Laponia, it's a uh, nine. 9,400 9, square, square, square kilometers, and uh, it's 83% uh, of all protected area in Sweden. It uh, also consists of four national parks, Stora Sjöfallen and Saris from the 1920s, and Muddes and Padjeranta in 1942 and 1962. There is a free nature reserve, Shania, Stubba, and a part of Kvikjok Kabla. And we have also three different areas in the World Heritage that is uh, not protected yet, but uh, they are working to get it protected, but it's because we have a lot of problems with mining in these areas too. There are three municipalities involved, Gällivar, Jokman, and Arjeflug. There are nine different Sami communities in this area that will have the reindeers during the summer pasture. During the summer there is, a lot, uh, there is about 65,000 uh, reindeers uh, grazing in this area. In the east part of the area you have also grazing areas during the winter time. And if I ask a Swedish person in general, the answer will be that Laponia is in the wilderness. Also when you're working with a tourist organization, they present this area as a wilderness area. And even if they know that there have been Sami for a thousand of years in this area, they still say it's wilderness. So what is wilderness? Wilderness is a natural environment on Earth that has not been significantly notified by human activity. The most intact, undisturbed, wild nature areas left on our planet, those lost truly wild places that humans do not control and have not developed with roads, pipelines, or industrial infrastructure. And according to this definition, Laponia couldn't be a wilderness, but still we have a lot to do to have people to understand this is a cultural landscape, this is not a wilderness. And even if you look to the criterion for the World Heritage, they are saying 
that the site is extraordinarily rich in both tangible and intangible heritage, demonstrating the long-term sustainable land use of the Sami, Sami people. But still, we are working with the problem that people think it's a wilderness. And actually, the Swedish government, when they worked to get this area as a world heritage from the beginning, they, are all, they only fo focused upon the wilderness and they didn't have, didn't use the Sami culture in that. But uh, UNESCO said that the uh, wilderness and just the landscape is not enough to have it an, as a world heritage. And uh, there was a lot of discussion that all started at already 1985 to have this area as a world heritage and just focus, uh, focus on the wilderness. But in 1996, they included the Sami culture, and then the area was accepted as a world heritage. The cultural landscape in the area was the key to get Laponia to the world heritage status. And we're talking about three categories about cultural landscape. A landscape designed and created intentionally by a man, an organic or organic evolved landscape, which may be a relic or a lands fossil landscape or a continuing landscape. An associative cultural landscape, which may be valued because of the religious, artistic, or cultural association of the natural elements. All these uh, three category categories you can find in uh, Laponia. So from the Sami perspective, we are saying this is a culture area and we are focusing up on the culture of the traces that we have uh, left behind us. So we can say, so without Sami culture, no world heritage. The Sami culture, Laponia world heritage. And uh, this is a uh, really important meaning when we're working towards a uh, Swedish society that we also stress out that uh, without the Sami culture, there should uh, not be a world heritage that have been our way to gain success in this uh, uh, joint management we have today. I will show you a picture from this area. This is for something we call in Sami, Geddi. If you take a Swedish person, for example, a hiking tourist who has a tent, when he comes to this place, he often thinks uh, this is a good place to put up a tent for a night or to have uh, some meat, uh, so have a meal or so. But for a Sami person that's coming here, this is uh, much, much more. This is a, a trace from our culture, from our old culture. This is an area where the reindeer has been grazing we also know that we can find uh, fireplaces, we can uh, find uh, lettuce from the, the, some uh, huts, and so on, just to know what to look after. And here we see how important that you have the cultural uh, eyeglasses to see, in what, to see and uh, to read the landscape. A different person have different uh, uh, ways to, uh, to read the landscape and that the cultural knowledge is very important to understand what you actually see in the area. But if you turn back the time to 1996 when the area became a world heritage, the state still had an idea that they should continue to manage the area as they always had done without Sami involvement in the area. And uh, that means this area has been uh, four national parks and uh, three natural reserves. The Sami people didn't have the right to hunt in the area. They didn't have the right to build uh, new places to stay in the area. So it was like a forbidden area. M uh, my grandpa was from this area and he has a joy, a Sami tra traditional song that he called the forbidden area. So when he moved into this area with the reindeers during the summer, he knew that he wasn't allowed to do a thing in this area. And that was the situation in 1996. 1996. And when the Sami people heard that the uh, county administrations should uh, keep the management responsibility and not involve the, the Sami people, they said we, are, we aren't accepted that, accepting that because the Sami culture is the fact why we have a world heritage. And they also said uh, 
some people that have managed it for generations and we can do it in the future too. So we should have the responsibility for the management organization. And uh, this took a very, very long time and there were a lot of conflicts in this, uh, or in this uh, management planning because the Swedish state and the country administration have their ideas and the Swedish uh, Sami people had their own ideas how they should work to the management of the world heritage. But I will do the uh, history very short and jump until 2006 because then something happened. Then uh, the country administration and the three municipalities sat down and started to talk uh, that we need a common organi organization of the management in this area. And after a while they also included the Sami people Actually, one of the head of the county administration went up to the summer area for uh, the Sami people and uh, visited the people up there. And he spent the whole night talking with the Sami, Sami leaders there. And in the morning, the Sami people said, we can start to discuss a uh, joint man management organization of World Heritage Laponia. And uh, so 2006, all the different par parts sat down at the at the common table and started to talk. And they focused on, three, on five different themes. That the the manage, management plan should have a common value base. There should be a value, a common value for the whole management plan that both the Ag Point administration and the Sami people could stand behind. There should also be an information, communication, and education about the Laponia World Heritage because they saw that people knew a little, a little about the world heritage. They also said there should be a new management plan, and in the management plan there should be a new way of thinking. Before they had been thinking about wilderness, now they should be thinking about human, use, nature, and culture, that is a holistic perspective, a holistic view that everything is connected to each other. They should also be prepar pr uh, preparing for a new management organization. And there should also be a temporary organization until the uh, new man management organization was established. All this work took, a uh, took uh, five years. And in August 2011, the five different parts could sit down at a meeting and sign a common management organization plan and also the management plan for this area. This uh, management plan that the uh, different parts signed in uh, August 2011 also changed the regulation for the national parks. So today the Sami people in the World Heritage have the right to hunt and build the cabins in, the, in this region. In the new management organization, the Sami people are also in the, in the majority in the board. And the new organization is also responsible for all the management in Laponia. The Sami people can also use the reindeer act in the national park, for example, hunting and fishing. Laponia, the management organization of Laponia also can take the responsibility for the work with predators, for example, like uh, wolf and wolverine. But we're not doing that today. That's something we are going to start to work during next fall. And uh, still, this just is a project. The Swedish uh, government said, we are doing this project for until two 2015. Then we will evaluate it and see if some people could manage this area. So we really need to show that we are able to manage it in a good way. And in all our work in the management plan, it's uh, very clear that the tra traditional knowledge of the Sami people should be uh, very important. And the traditional knowledge should go through all the decisions we are making in the, in the new organization. So how are, we, how are we working? We have found out during this uh, 
past year we have been working in the management organization, that it's really hard to do. It's really hard to put the traditional knowledge into this uh, organization and how we are managed the area when we always have to discuss with the four other parts how we want to do. Because we are working in consensus in the board. So if you are not, uh, if the board isn't, uh, I don't, is there are some parts in the board that don't like the idea that some people presented. We need to discuss and discuss to refine the solution that every part could stand behind. And uh, this shows it's really, really hard to get the traditional through in all decisions we, we, we want to do because we always have to take uh, care about the different other parts. And uh, we have to, we, I and my staff have to remind us each day, every day that we are, are working with the traditional knowledge and, uh, and we have to say we ha have to incorporate the traditional knowledge and we have to remind us about that every day because it's so easy to do how the Swedish state has done for uh, at least 100 years. So that's something we are working a lot with to remind ourselves and find ways to integrate the traditional knowledge in a better way in the work we are doing. To our help we have uh, something we call the Sami Tipi and uh, we're working with the holistic view where the nature values, reindeer herding and the Sami culture and the traces of our user are all connected. When we're making a decision or when we're doing something in the area, we have to see how are these di four, three different uh, parts affecting each other. If we are doing something for the reindeer herding, how will the nature values uh, be, an eff be affected? Or how will the traces of the earlier users be affected if we're doing something for the reindeer herding? For example, it can mean uh, when we are working with the bridges over the ridge, over the uh, rivers, that we are moving the bridge to another place is better off for the reindeer herding and uh, it uh, isn't easy and uh, it's closer to some traces of our users that we want to show to the tourists that uh, come to, to our area. Also, we have a common value for all the work we are doing and uh, this is a common value that for the Sami communities, the municipalities and uh, the uh, county administration and the natural uh, uh, environmental protection against the stands behind. Laponia is an entirety in which the important rela relationship between human beings and the environment is and faces. This entirety is an indefeasible heritage that should be passed on to coming generation. The Sami culture lives on and really hard is active in the area while new Sami livelihoods are developed in harmony with the environmental and cultural values that make up the foundation for the World Heritage Appointment. The cultural landscape, national parks and natural reserves are preserved and cared for in such a way that their natural values remain, that they continue to be a positive example within cultural heritage care as well as an asset for the development of the attached municipalities. Our visitors' experience are enhanced through relevant information and other ventures. So today we are working a lot about the information about the Laponia World Heritage, but also information how they should behave when they come into this area so they don't disturb, disturb the reindeer herding. Because we have experience that people can walk into the reindeer herding areas and disturb the reindeers and the herders have to do a lot of work to, to collect them again. So we are putting a lot of work into just information and information about the World Heritage and the Sami people. Our uh, work also depends on five concepts for management. It should be sustainable, there should be wholeness, we should always look at how one decision can affect other parts in the World Heritage. There should be local participatory openness. It should be a common work and it should be consensus. The, that the locals are involved is really, really important because without the local support, we have, don't have a management. And uh, the locals, it, it just not mean the Sami people, it also means the other people, the Swedish people that are living around us should also be included in the work we are doing. And sometimes there, are, there is a problem when we have to have
have all the interest in the same room because we know that the same interest and other locals' interests should aren't the same all the time. And we're also trying to find new ways of working where we're including the Sami traditional uh, uh, knowledge. For example, we have something called Servelatnia. It's the learning room. And the learning room is that when, when we are talking to people, it's important to have their knowledge into our organization, but we should also inform them. So it's a two-way communication that we put a lot of uh, stress on, that we need the, in the, the knowledge that the elder and other locals have, we need it into our organization. We also work with consensus, and consensus is, uh, it's a, there's something we must have when we are doing decisions, that all the five different parts stand behind the decision. It means that it takes a longer time when we're not using the majority we have in the board. So we, are, we have something we could decide in majority, we now de deciding in consensus, because from the Sami perspective, we think it's better if we have the county administration and the, the SEPA, Swedish Environmental Protection Agency behind us instead, as I said, there's a Sami way of thinking. Now we're working that should be stand behind all the decisions we are doing, but it takes a lot, much longer time. For example, we were working with the mining companies. It took about eight months to have a, have a common uh, paper to the state, so it takes much longer time, but it, then we have much stronger decision too. We also have something called Radidibmi, then when we have meetings with the locals, both Sami and non-Samis, with different interest groups, there where we're discussing what do they want and also listen what uh, kind of knowledge do they have about the subject we are interested in. For example, we had uh, Dibmi, these meetings with the Sami people last fall where we were discussing the predators, the, hunt, the predators. And it turned out that the Sami village, the Sami communities were talking about we are going to do this because the Laponia or Chuchidus and La the management of Laponia, it's us, it's the Sami people. And when the Sami people start to think about the Laponia Chuchidus, the management of Laponia as themselves, I think we have uh, take one step forward. And the elders' knowledge is also very important in our, our work. So in the office, we always have the door open, and uh, now we have at least one to two uh, elders that come into our office at, every week and discuss uh, different things they want to learn us, and they also want to pass down their knowledge to us so we should know how to do. And it's very helpful for us by, uh, that the elders are coming to our, to our office, but we're also going out to them and ask them for their knowledge. Also, when we're talking about the management of the World Heritage, we have a management plan and where it's saying the World Heritage Lapone is administrated in such a way that its natural values is secured for future genera generations. The World Heritage is an asset for development. The World Heritage Administration is made up of a number of parties, all involved in the care and development of the area. The parties all enjoy a mutual respect of each other's different conditions, and the administrative work is a dynamic learning process, which is constantly developed, but where the value system remains as a strong foundation. Laponia Chuchidos is a role model for the administration of cultural heritage sites. For example, when talking about the dynamic, dyna dynamic learning process, I can mention that this summer, different parts, the content administration and the Sami communities and uh, the municipalities of Yellowore, they are going to a place up in the mountains area that are going to discuss how they look, in, look at the specific, specific things from different views. And just the thing that we are listening to each other and learning from each other, from each other that's a strong idea about Laponia Chuchidos, that we should listen to uh, each other's perspective and why we say as we do when we have our discussions. 
to understand why are we discussions, discussions going the way it is. So what is the uh, La Pony Tutorials? It's a management organi organization where the traditional knowledge should be incorporated. It's local management. The state is included, and we're working with consensus. And uh, we're working with new methods to do the work. And the main goal we have right now is to have the organization permanent. And we also work a lot with the Sami names because when we look at the maps, we can see that there's Swedish names instead of Sami names. So we're going out to the elders and to, other, uh, to ask for the right name in the area. And this also takes a lot, lot, lot of work. If you're going backwards, You can see on the map, there is still the Swedish name on the national park. And we have a work that we want to have the Sami name instead of the Swedish name. And now they have said from the agency that they could accept the Swedish na name if we had double name. So first the Swedish name, and afterwards it should be the Sami name. But we mean that it should be the other way around. First the Sami name, and then the Swedish name. But there is a lo lot of work to do until we are there. For the nat nature reserve, Samia and Stubba, they have accepted that the Sami name could be first. Big, but the national parks are much high, on a high, higher level in the Swedish way of thinking, so they couldn't give us the Sami name first. So that's something we're working on, and that's something we're going to discuss on the next board meeting, why we couldn't have the Sami name first instead of the Swedish name. We are also building a visitor center in this area, where we uh, hopefully will have a lot of visitors that we can inform both about the world heritage in the mountain region, but also about the Sami people. And in this uh, visitor center, the Sami ideas have been very important. We have been a part of this uh, building from the beginning. And, uh, but uh, the traditional knowledge is really important in the work we are doing, and we're find, trying to find new ways to incorporate it all the time. And I think I will stop my presentation there.